Tonight, the Chinese reveal secret Microsoft patents. Should you go to jail for threatening someone else on Facebook? And will there be new rules for driving with smartphones? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 109 for Monday, June 16th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by iFixit. iFixit makes electronics repair easy with free repair guides, plus all the parts and the tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Microsoft has claimed for several years that it holds a trove of patents that Google's Android operating system infringes on. Now, a list of hundreds of patents that Microsoft says gives it the right to Android phone sale royalties has been published on a Chinese language website as part of a Chinese government antitrust review relating to Microsoft's purchase of Nokia, which includes technologies developed at Microsoft but also patents that Microsoft acquired by participating in the Rockstar Consortium that bought patents auctioned off after the Nortel bankruptcy. Now, Rockstar paid $4.5 billion for those patents, and some of them went to the consortium, which is a patent licensing company that sued Android makers and Google last October. You might remember that. Other patents, though, were handed off to the companies that participated in Rockstar. That includes Apple, Microsoft, BlackBerry, Ericsson, and Sony. Microsoft is said to be pulling in somewhere between $1 billion and $2 billion per year from Android device makers uh, paying royalties. The company says last year more than 50% of Android devices were made with licensing deals in place and that estimates now range as high as 70%. Kind of good business to be in. The U.S. Supreme Court has announced plans to investigate whether or not someone should go to jail for posting violent or threatening messages on social media sites, even if the intent to carry out those threats isn't clear. The court will consider the case of Anthony Elonis, a Pennsylvania man who was sentenced to almost four years in federal prison back in 2010 for posting violent threats about killing his ex-wife and law enforcement on Facebook. Lower courts had rejected Alonis's defense that the comments were protected under the First Amendment. The court will take up the case in the fall when the justices get back from their summer break. Amazon is expected to introduce its first ever Amazon smartphone this week. Twit will be covering that. And in preparation, the company has announced its Amazon App Store now has over 240 thousand applications in almost 200 countries and has tripled year over year. Now, if you compare this to Apple's WWDC earlier this month, they announced they had about 1.2 million applications in the Apple App Store. Google's estimated to have around the same number. So Amazon still has a lot of room to grow. However, the company's citing an IDC survey, which by the way, Amazon commissioned, so there's that. But this points to a high revenue potential for developers on the Amazon platform. 65% of the 360 developers polled said that their total revenue on the Kindle Fire is the same or better than with other platforms. 74% of those said that the average revenue per app per user is the same or better on Kindle Fire than other platforms. And 76% said that the Kindle Fire helped them connect with new market segments. Google has announced that its Project Loon initiative, which is to provide internet access to rural areas on Earth via balloon, are on track a year in and tells Wired that it should be able to provide LTE data connections, quote, in one or several countries within the next year. The company wants to grow a fleet of 300 to 400 balloons that can continuously circle the Earth at an altitude twice as high as a commercial plane would fly and stay up for 100 or more days. The balloons have already circled the world in as little as 22 days, which is a world record, and have delivered internet speeds of 22 megabits per second to ground antenna and 5 megabits per second to phones. Google's planning to partner with local ISPs to connect the balloons to the internet and then has already done so for tests in Brazil with some success. In other Google news, the company continues to focus on practical applications for Google Glass designed for businesses with its first round of Glass at Work certified partners. 
Have you heard of these guys? APX, Augmetics, Crowd Optic, Guidigo, and Wearable Intelligence. These companies cover business software, apps for doctors, broadcasting events, and apps for energy and manufacturing. Google says that hundreds of enterprise developers applied for the program, which lets them create business-specific apps for Glass, as well as become eligible for co-branding and listing on the Glass at Work website. Now, a quick check-in on Cloud Wars. TechCrunch is reporting that Dropbox has acquired a company called Parastructure, which is still in stealth, but builds data analysis software on top of open source infrastructure. Now, TechCrunch reports a source that puts the deal anywhere from $10 million to $50 million, though neither company is confirming this. According to Parastructure's now pulled kind of odd, LinkedIn profile. It builds beautiful data analysis software powered by cutting edge open source infrastructure. Dropbox has now passed 275 million users, is thought to be closing in on an IPO, and is branching into both enterprise and consumer content on top of its core mission as a storage provider. Speaking of enterprise, Box, the cloud-based file management service, not Dropbox, but Box, announced that it has acquired Stream, S-T-R-E-E-M, a company that allows customers to stream files to their desktop environments. The four members of Stream will join Box, and Stream's product will be folded into Box's larger offerings, the company tells TechCrunch. Box is currently in the process of going public and is working to expand its set of offerings, too. In a blog post announcing the deal, Box CEO Aaron Levy indicated that Quote, Stream has developed enhanced video and media streaming technology to ensure content is accessible from the cloud as fast as it is locally. Coming up, how can you catch a ride with the real Optimus Prime from Transformers? The answer will surprise you. <laughs> and up next, I'm going to chat with Harry McCracken about new regulations that could be coming to in-car devices and your smartphone. But first, let's take a moment to thank iFixit. That is who's sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. They're the makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or any project and includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit, with standard and specialty and security bits. It also includes ESD safe precision tweezers and anti-static wrist strap opening tools to get pretty much inside any phone or notebook or game console, you need a tablet. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's very durable, and it's the gold standard for electronics work. Garage hackers, CIA intelligence officers, the FBI, everybody uses iFixit's unique tools and they're also used by repair technicians everywhere. The ProTech Toolkit is only $64.95 and comes with a lifetime warranty. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for free step-by-step -step repair guides and all the parts and tools you'll need. Enter the code TN2 at checkout and save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit and enter that code TN and the number two at checkout. All right, joining us now is Harry McCracken, editor over at Technologizer. Hey, Harry. Hey, Sarah. Well, it's very good to see you again. I think it's been about a month since you were on Tech News Tonight. Great to be here again. Well, great to have you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the story that uh, the Department of Transportation in the United States wants to get some sort of uh, more of a standard for all of these smartphones that we've got in our cars with the safety to be considered. What's going on here? Well, there's a big... Uh transportation bill that the Obama administration has put together. And among the many things in it is um, basically giving the National Highway Safety Administration the right to treat navigation apps on smartphones like they do mechanical features in cars. So they can say that a navigation app has to follow certain rules to be safe. And if they don't like an app, they can then say, okay, you need to fix it like this or um, it's against the law. When would we, you know, hope to have rules like this on a, on a level of, well, let's all be safer and talk about what we should be changing in order to keep people safe? Well, that's one thing. But when could we see these changes being implemented? It's not clear because uh, the Transportation Department wants it to be official that they have the right to do this. But at the same time, they're saying they have no immediate plans to um, put any new rules or, or legislation into place. So, so it's a bit fuzzy. They've always had... Um, recommended guidelines for navigation apps. They've said that any one task you do on a navigation app on a smartphone should only take two seconds. 
but that was a suggestion rather than anything they could enforce. So if the department wants authority from Congress to regulate navigation aids, maps, it seems like a that's a no-brainer in that category. What other apps could be affected? I mean, that's really interesting because um, when you think about using a smartphone in the car, navigation comes to mind, but so does music. So do all kinds of other information apps. Um, there are all kinds of things that can distract you while you're driving, but this particular law is specific to navigation. And of course, it doesn't take into account anything that comes down the road, no pun intended, that we, we don't know about now. And it, it seems like a safe bet that five years from now, there will be smartphone apps that people want to use in their car that we don't even know about yet. Sure. Do you see, do you see uh, this moving toward something that a car manufacturer may have to implement on that level, some sort of inboard navigation system, uh, which obviously is elective now and can cost more money when you're buying a new car. But could you see it being something that's mandatory so that we're not forced to have to look at our phones and, you know, be menaces on the on the freeway? Yeah, I mean, I feel like whatever happens with this law, technology can go a long way towards solving this problem, which is real, since several thousand people die due to distracted driving a year and hundreds of thousands are injured. I mean, quite soon, every new car is going to have a nice large screen and they'll have Bluetooth. And there are technologies like Apple's CarPlay that, that let your phone project itself onto the screen in the car and present you with an interface design for the car. Um, and all of that can help. Uh, I have a navigation system in my car right now where I, I basically don't have to look at the screen because I can use speech recognition to tell it where I want to go. And then it uses text to speech to tell me uh, which steps to take. And I, I sort of feel like a few years from now, this will be less of an issue just because the technology will have gone a long way towards solving it. Well, that's a, you know, it's an interesting point you make that the technology changes so quickly. And sure, there's, there's going to be technology in a few years that it doesn't exist now, we've never heard of. But the government doesn't really move very fast, especially when no. it comes to things like this. So, you know, do, 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 you, do you see sort of a messy situation? It, it seems that uh, these regulations are always coming a bit too late. Yeah, I mean, that they move really slowly. They're reactive rather than jumping ahead of the situation. And that's kind of inherently messy. Like, like here in California, a law was passed saying you could not use your smartphone while you were driving. But then a guy got a ticket um, for using a navigation app, and he went to court, and a judge said, well, actually, you can use a map app while you're driving, just not any other sort of app. And so it, it's all really fuzzy, and it, it's state by state. And while well, nobody loves the idea of additional legislation, I'm also not sort of instinctively opposed to some sort of national guidelines um, if they truly do help uh, solve the problem rather than just add more bureaucracy. And it's kind of interesting, like what what constitutes a map app? Does it just have the name map right. in it in the app store, or, you know, in some sort of a category? That seems like it could be really fuzzy as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, these days, a huge percentage of apps on your phone have some sort of mapping capability in them, like, like as Yelp a navigation app, you certainly might want to use that in your car, and it does have maps in it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, I guess uh, it makes the whole self-driving car thing sound a lot sweeter <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> whenever we all get into those. Harry McCracken, uh, editor over at Technologizer, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And enjoy the World Cup. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Finally, would you like to take a ride in Optimus Prime, you know, from Transformers? I don't know how old you are, but you've probably heard of him. And you can. You can hail him, in fact, through the Uber app, and then he'll just arrive in the form of a big old semi-cab truck. Well, that's if you live in Dallas, Texas, or in Phoenix, Arizona, starting on the 19th, or in Los Angeles, California, starting on the 21st. This is not just, you know, a goodwill thing. Uber is offering this as a bit of a tie-in for the Transformers 4 movie, which is right around the corner. So enjoy that. And please take a photo and put it on Instagram so that we can all see your cool ride. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv with any questions, comments, or feedback. And of course, there's Tech News Today. That happens tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Every day, in fact, we're like our sister news sites. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.